just at 9 this Saturday, the 10th of August, 2024. Man with the plan. President Ranil Vikramasinghe vows to pass special laws if necessary to address wage issues of estate workers. The bandwagon. Several former Samagi Janabalavegya parliamentarians to support President Ranil Vikramasinghe as the presidential poll draws closer. From bad to worse, threefold increase to Sri Lanka's poverty line over the past decade reveals the Census and Statistics Department. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Farms in Labagat Hacker. This is Ada Verna First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Other Dharana First at 9. I am Aditya Adri Singh joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now taking to your top story this evening, President Ranil Vikramasinghe revealed that seven plantation companies have already agreed to meet the new daily wage of 1,700 rupees for plantation workers. Addressing a meeting, the head of state added that the wages board will convene next Monday to discuss matters pertaining to the daily wages of plantation workers. The Kandy District Plantation Labour Unions and Youth Leaders Meeting, organised by the Ceylon Workers' Congress, was held today at the Karalia Convention Centre and Centre for Performing Arts in Kandy under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. As the Ceylon Workers' Congress remains committed to serve all of you, we assure you that President Ranil Vikramasinghe will definitely win the upcoming presidential election on the 21st September. The Kandy district alone occupies seven seats in parliament. Six of those seven parliamentarians stand together with President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Furthermore, of the 297 local government representatives in Kandy, 287 have pledged their alliance to President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Some people mocked our decision to grant a daily wage of 1,700 rupees to estate workers. Although the government was a leader representing estate communities, he never spoke a word regarding the granting of 1,700 rupees to estate workers. He has never attended trade union meetings concerning the wage issues of estate workers. When MP Jeevan Thondaman and members of the Ceylon Workers' Congress requested an increase to the wage wages of the estate workers, people such as the Gumbaran inquired whether the wages will actually be raised. He wanted to see if the increase will be granted or not. They feared that if the increase was granted, Thondaman's faction would be emboldened with public support while their party would eventually collapse. That is why they always tried to sabotage the wage hike. Not only did they interfere with the wage hike, but they also provoked the estate companies to take legal action against increasing the wage to 1,700 rupees. We have not paid the EPF in years. We intend to start repaying the EPF from next year onwards. As the economy expands, state coffers fill up and as a result, we can allocate funds to be dispersed for that purpose. Estate communities had a very hard time over the past two years. While salary increments were provided to certain professionals, paddy farmers were granted a fair guaranteed price. However, we could not provide such benefits to the estate community. There is no point in delaying progress. Seven companies have already agreed to grant wage increments to estate workers. The Ministry of Plantation Industry is under my control now. After discussing all related matters with the Wages Board on Monday, I am ready to pass special laws to implement those decisions if necessary. We cannot delay this further. Once those laws are passed, I hope that both MP Thondaman and Digambaram will support me in getting that bill passed in Parliament. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake 2. Register now. Now, meanwhile, more politicians have pledged their support to President Ranil Vikramasinghe for the upcoming presidential election. The incumbent president's new allies include former Samagi Janabalavege MP Vadivel Suresh and former parliamentarian and minister Vijit Vijay Muni Soisa, along with Asanka Navaratna, who secured his seat in parliament through the SLPP's national list. Former parliamentarian Vijit Vijay Muni Soisa, who contested from Gampaha under the Samagi Janabalavege banner, announced his support for President Ranil Vikramasinghe during a rally in Bibile. 
Both Sajid Premadasa and Ranjit Madhu Bandara must remember that the people on this stage are very strong politicians. Can Ranjit secure votes from this district? I challenge him to compete against me from any party. I will defeat him. I want power and the public mandate to work for the people of this area. I will request that power from Ranil Vikramasinghe too. All of you are currently stepping on a financial landmine. All of you are 1.4 million rupees in debt. Please know that Ranil Vikram Singer is the only leader who can defuse that bomb. Meanwhile, Asanka Navratna, leader of the Sri Lanka People's Party, who aligned with the opposition Samagi Janabalavege last year, also expressed his support to the incumbent president. Navratna entered parliament as a nationalist MP of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna during the last general election. The majority of the party initially proposed nominating a candidate from the Sri Lanka People's Party. However, after further discussions, it was decided to support a mainstream candidate. During the Politburo meeting two days ago, it was decided that the party will support incumbent president Ranil Vikramasinghe. MP Vadivel Suresh, who left the Samagi Janabalavege last year, also pledged his support to President Ranil Vikramasinghe in the upcoming elections. He's a leader free from racial bias and has worked towards the welfare of the state community. Since he recognized us whenever it was necessary, we will support President Ranil Vikram Singer on the 21st of September. Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, says that plans are in place to turn around Sri Lanka's white elephant projects, primarily in Hambantota. Addressing a gathering, the opposition leader expressed his readiness to develop those initiatives with foreign funding. The Hambantara district's Samagi Deployment Squadron of the Samagi Janabalavegya convened today in Virakatia under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. I didn't come here to destroy anyone's reputation or character. This is the political truth. In the aftermath of the defeat in the 2015 election, a leader who fled the country released a letter accepting responsibility for the defeat. You might get to read about it in the near future. These people will once again flee the country once they lose this election on the 22nd of September. They will then publish another letter acknowledging their loss while also outlining how they destroyed their family and party. Despite our opinion on the matter, we have an international port in Hambantota. We also have an international airport here in Hambantota. Similarly, Hambantota also has international stadiums and conference halls. There are allegations that those infrastructure facilities were built based on flawed information and data. But what should we do in that regard now? It is imperative that we keep away from selfish politics. It is easy to criticize everything by saying that they are a strain on the government. It is indeed very difficult to turn something that is a burden on the country into an enterprise that is productive and of use to the people of Hambantota and even the country at large. I assure all of you that I will transform all failed projects into successful ones. We definitely cannot remove all these infrastructure assets and return them to our creditors to wipe off debt. Therefore, the need of the hour is to turn all unsuccessful projects into successful ones. That is not an easy task. However, we already have plans in place to develop those projects. We have to bring in foreign investments into the country to transform these white elephant projects into efficient ones. I assure you that my party and I will fulfill that responsibility. Now, leader of the National People's Power, Andrew Kumar Disanayake, claims that the party's election manifesto will be released on the 26th of this month to quell all rumours being spread by political rivals of the NPP at the moment. He made those remarks while addressing a gathering in Ambilipitia. A rally of the National People's Power was held in Ambilipitia under the patronage of its leader, Anurakumara Disanayaka. 
You all know about the Olympics currently underway in Paris. They host various athletic events, including the long jump and hurdles. However, the leaps made by our parliamentarians these days put the leaps made by Olympic athletes to shame. If we had sent some of our parliamentarians to Paris, we could have at least won a few of those medals. There's a huge competition between Sajid Premadas and President Ranil Vikramasinghe. That competition is about who will be the runner-up. They can go ahead and have that competition. No one cares. The public has already decided who will win the presidential election. To respond to those statements, we will release our manifesto on the 26th of this month. We will tell you what we plan to do. What did you hear about the National People's Power before? They said that we are unable to win because we only have 3% of the votes. They used to repeat that statement again and again. We can definitely understand how much they fear us. At the beginning, the political opinion was that the NPP cannot win. Can you hear it now? They don't say the same thing now. Now they say that we will abolish the Samurdia, we will take over property, and they also claim that businesses will close down when we take over. They say that we will not provide vehicle permits for doctors and that we will cut the allowances for government employees. However, we are happy about one thing. What did they say at the outset? They were of the opinion that we would not be able to win. What are they saying now? On the 22nd of September, they will have to say that the NPP won. At the moment, they have started to spread rumours against our policies. They say that we will take revenge when we come to power and they claim that there will be chaos in the country under our leadership. This is what they have begun to disseminate. To respond to those rumours, we will release our manifesto on the 26th of this month. We will tell you what we plan to do. With that, let's see what politicians across the political spectrum have to say about the latest political developments ahead of the presidential pool. Polling at the Polling at Une, Dati and Mulia Ramudale, Elabaduna, and I pretty bad. Tomas Adoni, Varagosa, Kalatina, Meratun, Tatindala, other Mitten, the Ganapu, Gane, Kakiana Bayang, Emina Kuke, Kacharine, Abida de Gatino, Kandegatino, Mother Kadan Hari Lacey, Kadanatama. We say, I will I write. Then Nidase, Chandati Kagari and Napula. Idriati. Ranil Vikram Singh Mahataage, Tira Peter Patanuva, Vedikave, Egolo, Rangana Niyamita Kiri Ka Tiru Ka. Janata Ava Dhanwa, Kuhita Tha Chandi Dhenno Ni Kela, Nevata Varadhi Maavata Kata Janata Ava Me Rata Yomuyeno Ata Viruddha, Enisa Apeta Loku Vishwasa Yattiye No, Ranil Vikram Singh Mahataage, Jaya Grahani Karno Kela, Eka Tavashi Vada Pilo Ola Sakasimingya No, Rata Janata Ava Samagin Dhe Naya Kwe Tika Okkum Ape Kin. Now the Sri Dalanda Asala Perahara of the Sacred Temple of the Tooth Relic in Kandy commenced today with the first Kumbal Perahara parading the streets this evening. The Kumbal Perahara is scheduled to continue until the 14th of August, while the first Randoli Perahara will begin on the 15th of August and will parade the streets for five days, concluding on the 19th of this month. The Kandy Asala Festival will conclude with the water cutting ceremony at the Mahavali River in Gatabe on the 31st of August. This year's Asala Festival will officially end after the Nilames together with the Devadna Nilame of the Temple of the T Sacred Tooth Relic, Pradeep Nilanga Dala, present the Sannasa or scroll to the head of state, the President of the Republic. According to the Devadna Nilame, Pradeep Nilanga Dala, as many as 40 elephants are to participate in this year's Kandy Asala Perahara. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka police have announced that special security measures are in place with 6,000 police officers deployed in the sacred city of Kandy to ensure public safety during the Perahara season. Now, in a recent report by the Department of Census and Statistics, it was revealed that the official poverty line has witnessed a sharp threefold rise within the span of just over a decade. 
The department reported that the poverty line has risen from 5,223 rupees in 2012 and 2013 to a whopping 17,014 rupees by January this year. The official poverty line represents the minimum income required for an individual or household to cover essential living expenses such as food, shelter and health care. Recently, according to a report released by the Department of Census and Statistics, the official poverty line has had a sharp increase within the span of just over a decade. In 2012 and 2013, the official poverty line was reported at 5,223 rupees and with a persistent expansion, it shot up to 17,014 rupees by January 2024, indicating a threefold rise over the past decade. In 2016, the poverty line increased to 6,117 rupees from the 5,223 rupees recorded in 2013. Later, the poverty line increased up to 6,966 rupees in 2019. However, with the crisis in 2022 wreaking economic and social havoc, inflation skyrocketed, pushing the poverty line to a twofold increase, reaching 15,970 rupees. The Colombo district claimed the top spot in the district wise comparison of the poverty lines, with the poverty line of 17,608 rupees being recorded in May this year, down from a staggering 18,350 rupees recorded earlier in January. The Gampa district neighboring Colombo came in second, with a poverty line of 17,517 rupees, followed by Nuarelia with 17,116 rupees. Other districts such as Munaragala, Kilinochi and Hambantuta ranked lower with poverty lines of 15,610 rupees, 15,773 rupees and 15,862 rupees respectively. With that, here's a look at more news across the island in brief. The body of a 61-year-old individual was recovered today from the rear seat of a three-wheeler parked near Melbourne Avenue along the Marine Drive in Colombo 4. According to police, the deceased was identified as a resident of Nara Hempita. The cause of the death is yet to be uncovered and further investigations into the matter are currently being carried out by the police. Meanwhile, several people suffered minor injuries today when a cab travelling from Vallavaya towards Alla collided with a private bus heading in the opposite direction. Police revealed that the accident occurred as a result of the irresponsibility of the two drivers. In other local news, the Hangwalla police arrested two suspects wanted under suspicion of being involved in a fatal stabbing which occurred in Hangwalla on the 6th of August. Following investigations by the Hangwalla police, a 24-year-old suspect was apprehended in Varakapola yesterday, which in turn led to the apprehension of a 47-year-old who is suspected to have aided and abetted the crime. The Hangwalla police are continuing their investigations pertaining to the matter. Star dishwash belly till idul basu in sede. Star dishwash magic topic. Welcome back. Now in your business news, Minister of Foreign Affairs, President's Council Ali Sabri has held discussions with the Egyptian business community to unleash the untapped potential to expand trade and investment between Sri Lanka and Egypt. During his official visit to Egypt, Minister Ali Sabri had participated in an event organized by the Cairo Chamber of Commerce in coordination with the Federation of Egyptian Chambers of Commerce on enhancing trade and economic cooperation between Sri Lanka and Egypt. The President of the General Federation of Egyptian Chambers of Commerce, the Assistant Foreign Minister for Asian Affairs, the Chairman of the Cairo Chamber of Commerce and a high-level representatives of the Federation of Egyptian Chambers of Commerce and the Cairo Chamber participated at the event. Posting on X, Minister Sabri highlighted that discussions were held to seek potential in sectors such as agriculture, apparel, ICT, renewable energy and tourism. He warmly invited the Egyptian business community to explore these opportunities offered by Sri Lanka. Now, according to the latest data issued by the Tourism Development Authority, Sri Lanka has welcomed 26,889 tourists from the 1st to the 4th of August this year. On the 1st of July, a total of 6,751 tourists arrived in Sri Lanka, while 7,191 tourists arrived on the 3rd of this month. Indians have topped the list with 3,922 tourist arrivals recorded within the first four days of August, making up 14.6% of the total arrivals. 
United Kingdom claimed the second spot with a record of 3,350 tourist arrivals, corresponding to 12.5% of the total arrivals from the 1st to the 4th of August. A significant number of tourist arrivals were also reported from China, France, Germany, Italy and the Netherlands. From the 1st of January to the 4th of August, Sri Lanka welcomed a total of 12,024,948 tourists, already reaching the halfway point of the country's tourism target of 2.3 million tourist visits this year. Now in other business news, Sri Lanka's Financial Intelligence Unit has partnered with the Registrar General's Department to monitor trusts and property registrations to counter potential money laundering activities. This collaboration, formalized through a Memorandum of Understanding on the 6th of August, grants the Financial Intelligence Unit access to relevant data-enhancing efforts to combat money laundering, terrorist financing and other related crimes. This MOU has been entered into by the FIU in terms of the provisions of the Financial Transactions Reporting Act No. 6 of 2006. Sri Lanka's Registrar General WRANS Vijay Singha and FIU Director Dr. Subani Kirti Ratna signed the MOU on behalf of their respective institutions. The MOU was signed in the presence of CBSL Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe who was at the event in his capacity as the chairman of the Anti-Money Laundering and Countering of the Financing of Terrorism National Coordinating Committee, while the CBSL's assistant governor, E.H. Mohoti, also attended the event. Now let's take a look at some corporate news in brief. Windforce PLC announced the inauguration of its 10 megawatt solar power project in Kabitigo Lava on the 7th of August. Spanning 35 acres, the project is set to add an annual output of 20.24 gigawatt hours to the national grid. Notably, it is the first project in Sri Lanka to receive a clean energy subsidy grant under the joint crediting mechanism program between Japan and Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, Dipped Products PLC announced that its board of directors had approved in principle the acquisition of a Thailand-based rubber glove manufacturing facility contingent upon conducting a due diligence study. The potential investment would be approximately 11 million US dollars and will be carried out through Dipped Products Thailand Limited, a subsidiary of the company. In other corporate news, LB Finance PLC announced the amalgamation of Multifinance PLC with LB Finance PLC with effect from the 31st of July 2024. In accordance with the special resolution passed at the extraordinary general meeting of the company held on the 28th of June 2024, the Department of Registrar General of Companies issued the relevant certificate of amalgamation on the 31st of July. That's all the news we have for you tonight. Thank you. Have a great night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.